This is the first video where we start analyzing an example of report made with the Semantic Brand Score Brand Intelligence app, the SBSBI. In this example, we consider online news related to the US democratic primaries, and we made an exercise, so we just consider a period in between November 10 and 25 of 2019. We measured the semantic brand score and the positioning of four candidates, which were Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. The first graph where we see SBS trends is where we have the important scores for the four candidates through the time. So here we did a, a daily analysis in these 15 days. On the vertical axis of this graph, we have the semantic brand score. So we see their importance and now it's changed over time. We can also over some mark in the graph to, to get numbers and also to see the values of prevalence, diversity and connectivity, or we can exclude uh, some candidates from the graph. In this first tab, we have absolute values, whereas we can compare there proportionally and so get proportional values if we click on the second tab. In all these cases, the analysis is telling us that Biden is the most important candidate, the one with the highest semantic brand score. And indeed, in the end, Biden was that one that won the Democratic primaries. If we scroll down a little bit, we find this other graph where we can study brand positioning, putting on the vertical axis the semantic brand score, so the importance of these brands. And on the horizontal axis, we put sentiment, which tells us which are the feeling in the brand surrounding. The way we calculate sentiment is using, I would say, standard methods, but we only consider uh, the surrounding of the brands. So if I have a large text, and in this large text, there is a negative feeling overall, but a small part which talks about a brand and with positive words, then the sentiment of the brand will be considered positive. Here we can also look at the evolution of sentiment and importance over time. So we can see this graph dynamically. And we say that sentiment is on average for all the candidates positive, and Biden always stays uh, at the top of importance with respect to the others. We can also want to understand what were the scores for each single dimension that makes the semantic brand score. So if you remember, we have prevalence, diversity and connectivity. And in this graph, you get an overall average that tells us uh, that Biden, again, has the highest semantic brand score. And it shows us how this importance is made. So prevalence is the highest for Biden. Then we have um, diversity in blue. And for connectivity, for example, we have that the last brand has a higher connectivity than Sanders a little bit. So even if uh, Batijieg is the um, last one, still it is a little bit more connective across topics. So it bridges more of the discourse with respect to Sanders. So if we over the graph, we can look at connectivity, diversity and prevalence values. So what should we do? If we want to improve the importance of our brand or the positioning of our brands, first of all, if we are low on prevalence, we should talk more uh, about our brands or use our press office or uh, inject social media with messages related to our brand, stimulate a conversation. If diversity is low, we should enrich the context of our brand, we should uh, put it in a more heterogeneous discourse, increase the diversity of its associations. So this we can do in a way or, an or another. But if we want to improve connectivity, that is going to be a little bit more difficult. So here in this graph, we provide some 
insights about the most connected words in the discourse. And so we could analyze if our brand is already connected to these words or if we can link our brand to these words, if it makes sense, also um, considering the brand values and the brand image. But if it makes sense, it could be useful to strengthen the link within some of these words or concepts to improve connectivity.